Hey guys, this is Ronnie, and this is my new channel, Little Mom Life. Um, I started this channel as an outlet for myself after the death of my husband, and I'm going to use this particular video, my first video, just as a means to kind of give you a fast forward intro into the fact that my husband died. So again, like I said, my name is Ronnie and I am a recently widowed mom of three teenagers. I have a 18 year old son and currently both of my daughters are 14, but my oldest daughter does have a birthday in two weeks, so she will be 15. On August 2nd, 2020, I was awakened by the moaning of my husband coming from the bathroom. I tried to get his attention um, to figure out what was going on with him, what was wrong, and he wouldn't answer me. In pre previous months, when he was going through his various challenges, I told him that, you know, I, when he would complain about it, I would threaten that I'm, I'm gonna call 911, you better let me know if you are right, because the way you're looking right now, I'm about to call folks on you. I used to always joke with him about that. And so this particular morning, he wouldn't respond. So I just told him, you know, you got to tell me something was going on. And he just wouldn't respond. So the only thing I could do was just to sit down and I just started praying. Um, out of respect for him, I didn't want to just barge into the bathroom and see what was going on. Um, I wanted to. I wanted him to let me know he was okay before I made a phone call, um, but he wouldn't respond to me, and so I just prayed while he was moaning. Um, and when it seemed like he was either slowing down the moans or if the moans had stopped, it's you know getting foggy to me now because I'm trying to not actually recall the exact details of that day but when he stopped I guess you would say I called out for him again let me know that you're okay you know and I already had the phone in my hand um, and he just wouldn't respond to me so I just hit as I'm getting ready to hit the emergency button on the phone I peek into the bathroom and I can see and just as she the operator answered I could see him and I when she answered I'm just like I think my husband just died you know and it um when you've seen death you know what it looks like you've seen it once you'll never forget what it looks like and so I'm in my mid 40s I've seen death um, I took care of his grandmother until the day she died I know what it looks like and so when the operator is asking me if I want to if I'm able to pull him out of the bathroom lay him down on the floor and, and try CPR I'm like no <laughs> you know I one I didn't want to touch him I didn't want to move him I didn't want I didn't even want to go to the bathroom you know I just like in shock you know and he was always a big heavy guy and and that's the husband I remember the way he the condition he was in when he passed was not the guy I married um so when she's asking me if I want to move him I can't move there's no way I could move him he's a big guy you know <laughs> even though he I probably could have you know um so as I'm giving her my details and she's trying to calm me down while we wait for EMTs to arrive which really was less than 10 minutes um I'm putting my dogs in the crate. They're going crazy because 
I'm putting them in their crates and they, they generally, you know, that's not supposed to be happening. And then I'm on the phone. You can hear that my voice, I'm opening the door. That's already like, oh, hold, hold on. What you doing? What you opening the door for? My dogs go crazy when I open, when we open the front door and it's, it's, you know, early in the morning. Like, what are you doing? So as the EMTs and the Sheriff's Department start to arrive, um, Police Department, I don't know how to call them Sheriff's Office, but the Police Department start to arrive, the com and then they're coming up the stairs, the commotion uh, awakens my son, plus with the dogs barking, my son wakes up and he comes out, and as he's coming out of his room into the hallway, just as he's coming to where our to the landing where the stairs are he can see the EMTs coming in and he knew immediately and he just fell to his knees and you know I'm trying to console him and, and let them know you know where to go to find my husband and um, you know they go in do what they have to do and um, you know didn't take them long and they came back out and said there was nothing that they could do which I already knew, you know, I knew I could see it, I, I, I knew, um, but that confirmed it for my son. Um, and little did I know at the time, but my daughters were awake in the room, that they, they were aware of what was going on, but they were not coming out of their room. So at that point, it starts all the questioning from the detectives and EMTs, and I'm trying to explain to them uh, what had been going on in the last 48 hours, the last few months. Um, I'm making phone calls. I have to call my mom. I have to call my sister. I'm calling my sister, trying to get her to come over so she can sit with my daughters uh, in their rooms, in their room while I dealt with the business of death. So I'm trying to explain to the EMTs and the detective that he's not under any doctor's care there's no COVID in the house there's he wasn't sick certainly not on his deathbed sick um he had been he had some medical challenges um some health challenges in the last eight months I would say um at that at the time um longer than eight months really but the drastic changes happened in 2020 um, so I'm trying to explain to them, you know, little things that he had that, that was going on with him and how we thought it was kidney stones and, or just, you know, 50 year old man, uh, issues. And, you know, my husband is never one to go to the doctor. He's never one to run for traditional medical, medical care. He's one to do it holistically. And so that's what he was doing, um, in his care, taking care of himself and, for his pain management, he was just taking acetaminophen because he wasn't in excruciating pain, but the acetaminophen allowed him to just relax that pain a little bit, dull that pain a little bit. But you know, he wasn't on his deathbed. He wasn't on his deathbed. He wasn't at his peak. He wasn't 100%, but he certainly wasn't on his deathbed. And that's all I can really say. Um, we knew something was going on, but like I said, we, we you know, we kind of chalked it up to kidney stones, you know. We we joked for a while that he had gotten, that he had lost a lot of weight. And I'm like, dude, you, you know, you might not want to go get that checked out. But then he, you know, he just, we chalked it up to, again, his appetite changing because he had tried to change his appetite at one point. But, Anyway, um, in the last week of his life, he he did complain about being tired. Um, he did complain about um, the AC was bothering him a lot. He was cold, um, shivering, you know, uh, when the AC was on. And so it was just kind of like, It hurt to the bone almost when it was on it was too much you know for him to handle so he um we you know we had to turn it off or whatever and deal with it like that but
So you know that was you know no big deal, but he was you know still managing. But that last forty eight hours, uh, he could um he could barely move. He was very weak and just felt very tired. And he was saying he needed to get his energy up and he needed to he needed some B twelve. That's what he kept saying. He was like, I gotta get my B twelve. I gotta have my medicine. I gotta probably take some iron pills. That's all he kept saying. And so you know I you know I'm like okay well you know we can you know order some uh, B12 that's no big deal um, and he barely had an appetite so you know we just we're people of faith and so we just believe that you know this too shall pass <laughs> and um, like we say he wasn't on his deathbed we that, that was never in in an idea that was never an an option you know that he was on his way out of here so you know all I could do really was pray for him I prayed that he would be released from the misery I prayed that he, the pain would be removed from him I prayed for restoration of his body I prayed, I prayed for healing yeah you know because as a you know I'm a woman of faith so you know I, I know that all things you know everything that you pray for is possible to happen but I also know that God's will be done so while you're praying for whatever it is you're praying for, you know, you gotta, you just gotta know that that answer will come, but it may not come the way you want it to, the way you think it's gonna come. Yeah, so, you know, I learned, you know, a few months ago, you know, I learned a few months ago, you know, just to ask God what to pray for. You know, how am I supposed to pray? What am I supposed to be praying for? Certainly, you know, when I'm praying over health or praying over a person, it's what am I praying for? Why, why I have to pray for this person, but what am I praying for? Am I praying for restoration? Am I praying for preparation? Um, I pray for both, you know. I, I, I prayed for him to, to come back from the husband I married, my big, strong energetic hard-working husband I prayed for that guy to come back for him to be restored but I also prayed that if that were not God's will if that was not God's will then I asked for strength for myself to be prepared to handle that I asked for guidance and covering to help me deal with it to know that I have to continue on without him and while that's not something I wanted that's not something I um was looking for that's you know that's not what I wanted I, that wasn't a desire of my heart but I knew that however God worked it out that that was a possibility too you know and so if that's what if that were to be the case then I'm going to need help. I'm going to need guidance. I'm going to need strength. I'm going to need covering. I'm going to need <laughs> so much help. And, and that was God's will. You know, I expected that it would take time for him to get his strength back. I expected that it would that he wouldn't be I did not expect that he would be restored 100% overnight you know I know miracles happen but you know I, I also didn't expect that but um, I was okay with it taking time you know I was really like okay you know he'll it'll take him the rest of the year maybe but he's gonna come back he's gonna slowly start to regain his strength and his energy that's definitely what I was expecting um, so that Sunday morning, I, you know, after I prayed myself to sleep, I'm truly expecting that he's going to, we're going to wake up Sunday morning and he's going to let me know that he's feeling a little better. He's, you know, feeling a little bit more pep in his step. He's getting a little bit of energy back. You know, feels like eating a little bit. And if he eats, then I know he can start getting his energy back. 
but that didn't happen. Never ever expected that he would die from it. So, you know, it was unexpected. It was sudden, even though he hadn't been 100% in the months leading up to it, to that date, it was still sudden because it, <laughs> he wasn't on his deathbed. His man was functioning. He was all right. You know, you know, we all have health challenges. So it was one of those things where you was like, oh, you know, little challenges here or there, but you know, it's part of getting older and you just chalk it up to that and you leave it alone. You do what you got to do and you keep it moving. And that's what he was doing. So for August 2nd to show up and that's how the day starts. I go, oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Alrighty then. All right, here we go. I can't believe this is life. So I'm going to end this here and come back and for a part two, I guess, and kind of explain where, what led up to August 2nd um, in the, maybe I guess 2019, <laughs> what was going on in 2019 that kind of led us through everything that ended with August 2nd, 2020. So I'll be back.